Hey, you dice checkers. Bet you were expecting Chris, but it is I, Matt, also known as the Faceless One from Dice Sagas. Coming to you today with some special content. This is the results of the first turn of our campaign, War of the Woods. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. The conflict within the Dusk Woods continues to heat up as the forces clash in small skirmishes while the leaders contemplate their next move. Garatraz, the untouchable, continues his raids upon the Riverwatch outpost, drawing the ire of the War Council of Avalorn. Mara, the Oracle of Avalorn, can no longer wait and musters a task force to put the Beast Lord's name to the test. A dangerous tactic to play considering the terrifying toll that this foul creature has caused upon her forces already. But backed by several trustworthy leaders and warbands, there is confidence that they can bring down the beast and deal a blow to the Chaos Warherd's morale. Her scouts have reported that Doomshank Port stands nearly empty and devoid of defenders. Most likely the majority of the forces stationed there have been called out with the Four Horn Beast Lord's raiding parties. If they could deal a decisive victory against him, they could drive the entire army into a rout and sack the port with their momentum. Visions of a great burning fortress flash in her mind as the generals call to her attention. Several war parties sworn to the warherds had been spotted, and the Alliance of Avalorn have begun the pursuit. This was their moment. The mighty beast lord towered over many of the orcs that charged beside him. They were odd war companions for him. He had not met many that would fight with the same fervor and ferocity as his own warherd. More peculiar was the fact that while even his brethren suffered from the trials of war at times, these orcs seemingly enjoyed the battle regardless of the outcome. He pondered over how he would deal with such opponents in the future, but for now, they were an invaluable force to him. Juxtaposed beside them were several legions of undead, a token force sent by Lady Catalina Valancourt. They were deathly silent but followed the commands of the great beast lord unerringly, something that gave him a sense of unease. The dusk raids upon the Cornate encampment was a devastating success. Garotras did not know why the corn warriors had pledged their aid towards the knife ears, but it mattered not, for he did not care for the details. The greenskins made quick work in butchering the camp, snuffing out the majority before the alarm could even be sounded. Among the Chaos Warriors, giant vermin warriors also encamped there, and while their strange machinery made for an impressive display of force, they too were quickly cut down by the overwhelming numbers of orcs and beastmen. Warhorns bellow in the morning sky as orange rays of daylight try to pierce the incessant umbra of the dusk woods. The third moon rose high into the sky, and with it came the morning shadow rainfall. It was time for his forces to retreat back and await the enemy counterpush. He signaled for his herds to pull back, as well as roaring to the orc chieftains to also rein in their troops. Anyone left behind would surely be slaughtered for naught. The enemies would soon be in pursuit, and they needed time to set up the ambush. But as his forces turn, the warhorns are cut short and are replaced by the sounds of panpipes and distant claps of thunder. Guttural bleats of terror rise from the ranks as Stormcast Paladins burst through the woods, wielding hammers blasting away enemies into piles of ash. A storm of arrows rain down upon the Beast Lord's location as the Sisters of the Watch let loose their volley among the barrage of artillery ballista fire directed by Lord Ordinator Leonidas Van Cliff. Even in the gloom of the woods, one could not miss the shining shield wall of the Phoenix Guards with their glistening spears at the ready. Amongst the elves of Avalorn stood also the elves of Ter Giran, ready to lay down their lives to aid their brethren. The orcs among the warherd see this line as an open invitation, as well as a good chance for a scrap, and charge head first into the battle line, despite the catastrophic results. Garatraz watches as the chaos unfolds as if in an instant. 
he begins to back away, cutting his way through several enemy warriors when he deftly dodges away from a bolt of energy launched from above. The Oracle of Avalorn fluttered down on resplendent wings, energy crackling in her hands and fury in her bright emerald eyes. As Gauratraz's forces crumble around him, he looks up towards his elf and grinds his teeth. Of all the enemies that the Beast Lord had faced in his past, for the first time, he felt unable to win this fight. Not willing to fall here and be of no use to his sister, he takes his great axe and whirls around him with all of his might, cutting down several trees with his swing and sending them collapsing around him. Mara is forced to fly further away to avoid getting crushed, and that was enough for Garatros to make his escape. Grabbing several gores with him and then tossing them aside as he saw it fit, he fled the battlefield with his life, but in the back of his mind, the thought that motivated him most was how beautiful those emerald elf eyes would look dangling from his sister's staff. The battle raged on well into the afternoon, and by then the war herd forces had routed and scattered, leaving an open path to Doomshank Port. The Alliance took the port with ease, as there was little to no resistance left. While the port itself was likely worthless from their point of view, it did open up avenues of attack for the next part of the campaign. Mara let her companions rest for now though, knowing that the next advance could be the death knell for the Warherds, or spell disaster for the Alliance. Further upstream the Shadowflow River, the rumblings of war were only beginning as the Avalon Alliance continued their preparations for their assault on Bristlefort. The device that they had created was not unlike a cannon, but the scope of its power was of a greater magnitude. Channeling in arcane powers from various sources, it would be able to pierce any structure and likely destroy the target city in its entirety if not held in check properly. The creation of this device had taken several weeks of preparation, and would all be for one shot at breaking the stronghold of the Warherd Vanguard. While built in secret, the funneling of power into this weapon has surely drawn the attention of any magically inclined individual from leagues around. The Vampire Lord Conrad of House Ash drifted listlessly near the artifact. He was a keystone piece of this weapon's activation, as only he and four others had the mental fortitude to command such a magically suffused device. For lesser beings to wield it would shred their minds apart. No, it was only the steeled mind of the Vampire Lord that could contain the stress and destructive power. Yet, despite the catastrophic power contained within, he couldn't help but wonder about this tenuous allegiance to the Elves of Avalorn. He had his own agenda and reasons for siding with them. But with such a power within his grasp, his avaricious mind entertains the thought of perhaps taking the power for his own. His thoughts are broken by the slow and lumbering march of undead. With his own forces standing at attention around him, he curses at the thought of a rival force attempting to assert themselves in his presence. It was insulting, and not a slight he would leave unanswered. With a shouted order, his legions advance in lockstep towards the approaching battle lines. Skeletal warriors clashed soon after, and a slow war of attrition broke out as ranks of warriors fell and rose over and over. Lord Conrad thought the din of battle music to his ears until war cries in the flanks gave him doubt. The thunderous charge of blood knights decimated his battle lines and trampled his followers into piles of dust. In the distance, he could see not one but two vampire lords leading the assault. Lady Katerina Valancourt in her monstrous form and Lady Beauvoir atop her bloody palanquin, an unholy union of two powerful vampire houses. Lady Valancourt wastes no time on the chaff. Brushing them aside with her horrifying body, she reaches forth and snaps the chains binding the artifact to the altar. The power channeling through it wanes quickly. With the circuit of arcane force broken, the artifact loses a large portion of its power, 
but still retains enough to still be a fearsome object of might. So this is what they've been planning. Amusing. <laughs> She laughs as she hoists the seemingly amorphous orb in her claws. Her blood knights continue to crush all beneath them and lay waste to any who dare stand before them. Looking around, Lord Conrad had already fled the battle, knowing fully well that no victory could be gained from staying here. Far better to recuperate and plan the next scheme. There you have the end of turn one. The Alliance of Avalorn have dealt a telling blow to the Beastmen's morale. Not only have they been successful in taking Doomshank Port, but they've also managed to defeat Garatros the Untouchable. On the other end of the battle, the Warherds have managed to stave off a potential threat to the Bristle Fort, and with their major victory, they've gained a powerful asset with which they may tip the scales of war in their favor. So what will unfold in the next turn? Will the Alliance of Avalorn push onwards and smash the Brazen Idol? Will they risk everything in a gambit against the Bristle Fort? Will the Beast Herds attempt to smash open the stronghold of Oakshade and open up a direct path into Avalorn itself? Or will they focus on Riverwatch, hoping to take it and cut off the main army of the Alliance? Help us write the next chapter in this story. You know, the usual like and subscribe and all that, but also join our Discord channel and get active. This campaign can only be made possible by the amazing contributions of our community. A special shout out to everyone that has gotten involved so far. So join in and give us your battle reports, show off your hobby, tell us about your armies and their heroes, and let the dice tell the story. I just want to say thank you for watching this content. If you do want to support the channel, we are registered on buymeacoffee.com. The link is down below. It is quite thirsty work, so if you'd like to support the stream or even make regular donations, check that out. That'd be massive, massive help. If not, no worries at all. Take care and let the dice tell the story.